Hey fish friends, how's it going? This is Zenzo with DazawaTanks.com. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Brackish Aquarium. Um, a lot of you had mentioned in the uh, previous videos about the mud skippers and about the uh, Brackish Aquarium that I tend to talk a lot and there wasn't enough footage of the actual tank and the fish. So while I am going to talk through this video, what I thought I would do is really show the, the uh, mud skippers, showcase a tank, show off the puffer, and uh, just kind of let you enjoy the scenery that I've built here and uh, hopefully you like it. So um, kind of what I'll do is talk a little bit about what I've experienced so far with this tank and what I've done and uh, maybe some changes that we might do in the future. Before I uh, forget, uh, make sure that you uh, stay till the very end of this video. As you can see, there's a new island in this tank and uh, this island is something that I created to give the mudskippers more surface area, more areas to uh, live and hang out. Um, and uh, I show you how I made it step by step. So it's a very inexpensive process. The whole thing cost me about $4 to make. So anyway, here you can see the mudskippers. They are amazing. As a lot of you guys know, this is Larry, Curly, and Mo. Uh, that's the name that uh, my wife gave them. And uh, they have been a lot, a lot of fun. Um, they have a lot of personality. They will come out, um, if, I, if they're not in um, visibility when I walk into the room, they immediately come out and um, they kind of hang out just to see if I'm going to feed them. Um, they're tons of fun, lots of personality. They chase each other around. A little bit of aggression, but it's not so bad. Um, there's a lot of space for them. Um, this is the figure eight puffer. Haven't come up with a name for this little guy yet. So um, maybe down below in the comments, if you guys can help me come up with a name for this little guy, um, that would be great. Right now he's about two inches or so. He'll grow another inch. Uh, right around another inch or so um, and then he'll be full grown so they do stay uh, pretty small um, a lot of you also asked about lids for the aquarium obviously the uh, mud skippers are jumpers as you see have you, as you've seen in other videos and uh, a lot of you are concerned about them jumping i actually made these custom lids out of acrylic you can see that i kind of have a little uh, custom handle that i put there so i can kind of lift it up um, one side's braced the other side isn't because it's a different thickness of acrylic um, as acrylic will bow um, with water. So anyway, as I mentioned, the mud skippers, you know, they'll come and kind of hang out and watch me when I come into the room. Um, if they see me reach for anything, like a jar, they will come right out and kind of sit there and wait. And uh, one of their favorite things to eat are these mysa shrimp. So it's just freeze dried shrimp that uh, they will gobble up, but they also love live foods. I've been giving them mealworms. I gave them some small crickets one time. I've got to get some more. Um, and you might've seen me before feeding them the uh, fruit flies um, without uh, flightless fruit flies. So here you can see, I put some of the mealworms in the tank and they are stalking them. And as soon as they see them, they attack them, they gobble them. Um, I'm not quite sure as far as the structure of their mouths, you know, how they, um, can uh, bite the mealworms and break them down. Um, mealworms are pretty harmless for the most part, so I'm not really concerned about that. But um, it seems like they kind of take them in their mouth and kind of smash them. Um, you can see the other guy here in the back, he's got one in his mouth and kind of chomps down, and then he turns around and takes off and uh, kind of takes the mealworm back to uh, his little lair there behind the rock. So um, anyway, I put a bunch of mealworms in here. I put them in different parts of the tank to just kind of uh, allow them all to get a bite. What will happen is if the mealworms or any of the food is put in one location, then the most dominant mud scraper will get his full share and uh, won't allow the other two to really uh, get a fair chance to get a full meal. So if I spread the food around to different parts of the tank, then they all can fill up their bellies and uh, enjoy the yummy food. So uh, anyway, you can see here, chomping down on the mealworms, a lot of fun. I also put some on the other side, on that island over there. So again, another area where, you know, one mudskipper can chomp on some mealworms there, and then obviously on the other end, they can, uh, you know, have an opportunity to get at the mealworms or whatever food, whether it's the, you know, the mysis shrimp or, um, you know, other, other live foods that I might put out. Um, they even have eaten some pellets, but um, I think I'm just going to continue to do, you know, different types of live foods and the freeze dried foods as they tend to like it a lot. Um, one of the things that is kind of fun is to kind of watch them jump across the pond. So as you can see, I, my camera didn't follow it quick enough, but this little guy just scooted over. 
um, from the main island area over to this other island or from the beach to the island I, sh I guess I should say and um, and then down below the puffer is there and he's like hey what about me I want food so again um, this little guy loves live food he eats a lot of snails um, but he has taken a liking to the mealworms so I've been giving him some mealworms as well and he tears them right up so obviously they have a beak you know puffers have beaks and they're very sharp as they can crush you know uh, crustaceans and snails and things like that and here you can see that uh, he's going right at that mealworm attacking it biting it viciously and uh, just in a matter of maybe a minute or so this mealworm is completely gone so as we can see um, he's biting chunks out of it and uh, at this point that mealworm is a goner he's dead um, he might have been fighting and kind of squirming at the beginning but now he's bit in half and uh, that's the end of the road for the mealworm and um, the little puffer here is getting a full meal he's getting uh, his full belly of a mealworm he'll eat a couple of them at a time um, he'll also eat three or four snails at a time so uh, he does a really good job of um, eating the live foods I'm very happy to see him healthy and um, I did treat him and quarantine him before we put him in this tank so again I don't have a name for this little guy um, my wife hasn't come up with a name for him either so I'd like something clever uh, I've, there was a lot of clever names you know thrown around for the uh, the mud skippers um, obviously they're Larry Curly and Moe after the Three Stooges um, somebody had commented that they're the uh, three muscapeers which is kind of funny as well so um, anyway if you guys can think of a cool name for this little guy that uh, would be fitting for uh, you know the personality and just kind of the fun nature of this tank um, that would be great so um, anyway uh, let's see here before I uh, go I just want to rem remind you that um, at the end of this video I'm going to be um, sharing with you how I made that island so um, I take you through the step-by-step -step process now you can buy islands um, and you can see it there in that back corner you can buy them they're like um, it's like a turtle island I guess is what they sell um, like at the pet store or Amazon um, but they're not inexpensive you know they can be you know anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars or something like that and I just wanted to kind of experiment make something custom I like doing a lot of DIY projects and do it you're you know making my own stuff for my aquariums obviously and uh, I thought I could do it for really cheap which I did it was less than five dollars I think it was maybe four dollars total so I'm gonna take you through and show you how I did it right now so the first thing I do is I start off with a piece of styrofoam um, I've done other builds before with styrofoam um, I've done 3d backgrounds some of you have seen some of my other aquariums where I've done 3d backgrounds I made a cave theme background one time using styrofoam and I just kind of shape it so make sure that it fits the corner and then um, you know cut it so that it uh, kind of has the right shape that I want one of the things that happens with styrofoam when it's cut is that you get these little beads that kind of fall off everywhere and uh, it can be kind of annoying all you need to do is take a little bit of a flame and uh, just kind of carefully and gently um, burn the edges and what happens is is that styrofoam that foam um, kind of melts back and gets hard kind of like if you were uh, maybe burning the end of a nylon shoelace or something when it's frayed it kind of does the same thing so it gets hard and it doesn't have those um, stupid little pieces of styrofoam you know falling off and getting everywhere um, they would just float in the water anyway and you could scoop it out but you know you'd hate to see a fish try to eat that or something and it's kind of ugly so I just make sure that I um, get rid of any excess styrofoam so now we have the base complete and this is the next step this is a, um, a foam that I've used in many applications before I've used it for my 3d backgrounds my Tanganyikan tank and it's uh, called great stuff expanding foam it comes in different uh, sizes and uh, you just have to make sure that you shake it up really well before you use it I just kind of uh, mimicked shaking it but I did a you know I shook it for about a minute before I um, started filming here and then just fill and just uh, fill in the area that you want to uh, have um, kind of as the uh, top layer of the island um, this is the same foam that I used when I made the um, kind of the inserts of the brackish aquarium where I had the at the very end of that video when I was filling up those concrete blocks to uh, take up space this is what I used so um, what I do is I kind of build up the edges because I'm gonna have sand on here and I want that sand to kind of stay on and I also want to uh, kind of have um, not necessarily a straight looking um, edge you know you kind of have it kind of want to have it uh, 
kind of organic looking so um, you know not like perfectly symmetrical or anything so um, anyway that is uh, the next step um, and then obviously um, you know you got to make sure that you uh, clean up and put everything away what I like to do is I like to put sand um, on the foam when it's still wet so right after I spray it I put sand on it um, I've done this before I've put um, gravel in some of my backgrounds before to give it some texture you can even embed things in there if you want it to be permanent so you can stick like you know a piece of wood or some rocks or whatever you want in there so that it's permanent um, and not stuck but anyway I just put sand in there and then put it outside and let it cure so you know it's very important to make sure that it cures for a long time I let it out for um, pretty much the whole day and then here you can see that it's dry the sand is stuck to the island um, obviously we didn't do the underside because you don't really see that area and it's all done so now what I need to do is trim it to fit so that it fits the corner properly you can see that the edges are not square so I cut off um, you know the sides so that it will fit in the corner of the aquarium so I cut off one side already and then I just kind of show you how easy it is to cut. It's just foam. So all you need is a, you know, a razor or a sharp knife um, and this, uh, just kind of saw away or slice away and it comes right off. Now, same thing because you're cutting foam, you want to make sure that you uh, get rid of those little, um, you know, extra little pieces that might be floating around, uh, falling off. So same process where you... Uh, just take a little flame, again, just with my, um, my lighter here, and just kind of carefully go over and um, burn off the uh, excess little areas to make it kind of hard on the end. Now, one thing that you will notice if you do this is that ex the expanding foam um, burns a little bit different than the styrofoam, so just make sure that you're careful there. But same thing, um, just kind of burn that off, make it hard, and um, then you have a nice edge. Um, if you wanted to paint it, you could. If you are going to paint it, then I would recommend using the Krylon Fusion. Um, all the research that I've done indicates that that is the safest uh, paint to use for aquariums. And then I attach some suction cups so that I can uh, stick it against the glass so that it stays in that area. So you can use silicone or glue. I use glue and just uh, let that dry and then stuck it right on the tank. <music>